Okay, so recently I got two of my characters to 950, and it's like not a little, this time won't be really a guide, but just more of a, just, like a, just explaining and just talking about how the power grind and what to really do and what to not do in like the higher power grinding and what's wasting time, what's that really worth it. Um, of course, this is not for everybody as this is not a casual, you know, playthrough. We play on three characters pretty much and we each character will progress each character by 10 times basically and since shadow keep kind of changed the way the power goes and the power grinding and how gear drops is actually 10 times easier to gain more power in this update now for example with that being said there i don't think it'd be it'd be very hard to get to 950 last season this quickly than this season just because how uh woe drops drop at your power now with that example, let's go on our, let's say our Warlock, let's say that. So right now, this Warlock is 950, just not wearing all the 950 gear. But for example, let's say you have 930 gear on your weapons, or gear power, and then you have 910 gear power on all your armor. That would average your gear power, let's say about 950, 920. Now, all your armor is 910, right? So what makes this update so great or shot keep so great is that any woe drop will basically drop below your gear power or or on it. So if I was to play it like a strike or or some sort of activity that drops blue gear or, or epic gear, it's going to drop below your gear power instead of last season or the seasons before this one uh any woe drop will just drop with a soft cap. So that kind of sucked, basically, because they were just completely useless. They didn't have, like, oh, I'm just going to dismantle it, and that's all we're going to use it for. Now they actually drop a couple levels bef below or at your gear power. So you're going to play activity, and you, your average is 920, but you have 910 armor. You're going to get 920, 919 armor, and it's going to boost it up even more, and it'll slowly keep going up and up and up, because your gear, your uh, weapons are higher, so the average will keep going up and up and up when you keep playing. So that's why you're doing second characters. The third characters are really easy to do, you get to 950 really fast, because the average of, or the power world drops uh, add up so much and so quickly now. So it's not even a bad thing playing on multiple characters. Yes, casual players don't have time to play multiple characters, but the game has set it up so easy to really play on multiple characters as they all have a starting point where you don't have to play the campaign you can just straight play the game and don't have to worry about all the long story quests and just play the game and just join in that's why it's super easy now let me explain when you have a second character and how easy it is to 900 900 is where you want to you want to get every character to if you want to do powerful drops you don't unlock powerful activities like on the directory for example when you open the director and you have these uh icons here the golden icons which tells you weekly stuff and those will give you powerful gear i'll explain a little bit more of that in the and later in the video but basically why i say it's easy very very easy to get to 900 on any character second and third character is because i'm sure people this before but it's really simple on your first character gets 900 power right easy do some powerful activities get them get you you get some weapons that are 905 904 that's pretty decent um and weapon and why weapons are important is because you can transfer weapons to another character it doesn't have to be the same class but you cannot transfer armor to another you can but you can't they won't count towards their power basically so you want to get the highest gear uh power basically and that will uh weapon power and that will give you a high advantage and power grinding your next character so when you transfer what the first thing you want to do when you transfer weapons is go to your collections and pull, go to any armor that's open world, or I mean leveling, I guess, and pull out, uh, pfft, doesn't really matter what, but blue or green and just slowly go your helmet, your gauntlets, your uh, chest piece armor and just slowly keep going and it'll slowly increase the power over and over because the average goes up and up and up if you have the weapons equipped on your second character and you get, you get to 900, you get, you'll get to around let's say 860 that's like seems like the average you'll get now how to get to 900 really quickly there's a couple ways to do this 
to get higher drops. One example is the season pass. The season pass, every time you level up, you, there are some of the tiers will give you armor. And the armor is so good, it is because when you pull things from your collection, it is 20 below your average gear power. But for some reason, the season pass armor drops at your gear power exactly. So as you can see, they're 950 as I'm supposed to be 950 on this character, as you can tell. I'm sure if you have, I don't know if they drop, I don't know if they are able to drop above pinnacle, like if they drop 951, I don't know if they do that. Maybe save some and check it out later. Um, But basically, how, what this means is that you're getting plus 20 on your gear power now. That is a crazy amount of power just from your season pass. And here's a good thing about season pass as well is because, uh, as well is the reason why it's good it's because um, the, it is class specific. So if you were to claim, let's say, hunt, a hunter gauntlet on uh, rank 14, but when you play on your warlock, it won't be claimed. It's specific to a character, not account wide uh, claim. Everything else will be claimed. Like, say, if you claim the rank 15 reward, it's going to be claimed already because I claimed I'm a hunter already. Kind of that example. So if you keep playing the game, you will have these already available to uh, uh, claim again, but on your Warlock or your Titan. And it's pretty easy because it's, you know, it's a high level. So that, that's pretty much the grind to 750 to 900 on a second character. On a first character, my best, your best bet, if you're just using one character, just play the game, do the Shadowkeep campaign, and just keep playing activities that you would like to play, like Strikes, Gambit, Crucible, Every will drop will drop above your power or your gear power, no matter what. Basically, you can use these if you want, but I would save, I would save these uh, seasonal awards after 900 because it's not going to be worth the power you get from these. I would literally just save these. These, these, well, these are your lifesavers. These will give you a ton of power. The other thing to remember is that if you go to a token vendor or I guess any planetary vendor when you redeem tokens like at Shax or Savala they will also drop at your gear power you do some testing first don't spam it but do some testing to see if it works basically they will help you a lot in powering as well if you want early power 900 to 900 you can redeem some tokens if you have some if you played before but that's pretty much it to 959 to 900 and I'll get to uh, explaining to uh, 900 to 950. It's not that hard, but it is quite the uh, grind if you really care about it. So one of the things, the great things about playing with three characters is that you get three times the experience when you do play on three characters. As you can tell, we're 82, but I haven't really been focused on getting experience. My main focus right now in the season to 950 at least and but over just by playing the game we just get to 83 of course i'll try to get to 100 pretty soon as the rewards are pretty not, not that bad um but i'll finish it pretty soon um but basically i'll talk about the power grind now from 900 to 950 using three characters now it's pretty simple and we'll go over what you want to do so let me talk about power first of all. There is a couple, two things you need to know about power. Uh, two things. So one thing is average. So let's say you're at 900 power exactly. What do you want to do to get more power? Well, your best bet in my opinion, is to do the most powerful reward that gives you the most power at the moment. So the only thing that can offer that, if for a quick one, would be play three gamut matches because that gives you a tier two powerful gear drop. Now that gives you one, obviously one item that will boost up to at least 905, 906. And that will bring up your average by quite a bit um, just because of how big the boost is. The other one is uh, Ikora's Bounty or Weekly, which is collect those green uh, Vex components when you kill a Vex. 
and her he, her drops at tier three, which is like the highest you can get uh, without doing raids or nightfall, uh, pinnacle nightfalls. Um, other than that, the other one is Hawthorne. If you're not in a clan, you need to, uh, or if you're in a clan, you need to get 5,000 experience per week and you'll get a tier two drop. If you don't have a clan, uh, you could probably just, if you need a clan and just want to get experience, you can just join mine, which is not used at all. Mainly used as a, for friends, but I mean, it's, I think it's public. I don't know. I think it's public. I don't know. It's nothing too special. The name can change whenever it wants. You could pretty much change it to whenever, whenever you want. That's the cool thing about it. Um, but if you need a clan, there's a clan right there. Um, other than that, let's see. Uh, yeah, so yeah, average. You wanna if you're at an even number, even average, everything's the same. Highest gear power you can get at the moment. Second, if you're not, if you're an odd. So if you say you're at your three weapons or nine, ten, and your armor is like nine oh six, nine seven, nine eight. 9, 7, and 9, 10, obviously you do not, and your gear power average is 9, 0, 7, 9, 0, 8. Obviously you do not want to do a high power, high gear, high powerful drop. That will, you will probably get the worst out of it. You're like, oh, all right, I do the tier three. I'm at average 9, 0, 7, but my highest is 9, 10 or 9, 12. Uh, you're probably gonna be super unlucky and you're gonna waste it. You get like a 912 weapon that you already have it on. It's pretty common and it happens a lot. If you're super lucky, you might not get that, but it is not worth the risk to really go for those. It's just do the small bounties until you have a good average between all of your gear, then use them, then go for the big tier uh, bounties. Of course, if you do Vex Offensive, which is tier two i'm not a good one but not really worth it and i'll explain later so basically let me show you guys oh god let me show you guys i guess some powerful drops that you probably do know about already but obviously crucible you got four from rotating game modes four from any of the core for me personally i play the fun game modes and i play the mix because i play a lot in the last seasons and it's pretty much the same stuff um of course you also gotta remember that every time you rank up a not by tiers by rank you will get a powerful drop plus if you play competitive you also get a ton and i heard it's pretty easy so if you want to rank up pretty quickly i haven't done it yet but i'll probably do it pretty soon of course before i talk about that the next thing is that you also want to pick up bounties every single time you do an activity i say do a crucible doing a strike doing gambit when you see, once you once you complete a match and you've done like two three or two bounties, go back to Savala or Shax or Drifter, and go and pick up more bounties. There is nothing why you would not pick up more bounties, as you have to pick, do eight bounties per week, anyways, for one of the vendors, and that will pretty much get you another powerful drop. And you get and you're doing the activities that want you to do get a powerful drop as well. So you're getting two powerful drops by playing the three or two or four strikes or three strikes you need to play for that powerful drop. Now, of course, you've got to do three gambits, which, you know, like I said, save it for last or do it first, pretty much. Um, it's pretty easy, that one. Vanguard, do three strikes in the same uh, s uh, elemental singe. Or you could do this, which is not really worth it, in my opinion. Uh, I'll talk about it later. Um, flash points change every week. Tango Shore is not worth it either. It takes way too long for the flash point. If you need it really badly, then do it if you have time, but it's just not worth it. And then the one big thing you got to know about this is Banshee. Banshee is a, an important vendor. Of course, you can only do uh, four of his bounties, oh, no, five of his bounties. Uh, oh, three daily and two weekly, so you could do five in one day, unless you save it for another week. But the important thing to know about Bounty, uh, Banshee, is that he will only give you a powerful drop that's a weapon. He will not give you armor, because his, his vendor is a weapon vendor. So if you need a weapon really badly, then go for Banshee. If you don't need a weapon really badly, don't do Banshee. Don't finish Banshee until you really need a weapon. There's no need to do him right away. Just 
save him for later. He's not. I won't be that powerful. But if any weapon really badly, which never really happens, then uh, do him last or do him first. If any weapons. Alright, now let's talk about the moon. The moon's a new area which will, it has all the powerful bounties and drops and all that stuff. So, Eris has a couple things which I'm at her right now. One is that this powerful bounty is always weekly bounty called Lunar, Lunar's Recall. You pick it up and it'll give you a powerful gear once you complete the replayable mission for that week, which changes every week. This week it is in the deep. You just skip pretty much everything on this one, so it's pretty easy to do this one. Other than that, she gives you a story quest every week, which eliminates one of these, uh, her dead, or her dead, yeah, her dead, uh, fire team members. Right now, we're in the second week, so there's only, uh, three more to go, but each time you do one, they give a powerful drop, so it's pretty good. Um, other than that, the other thing to note or do is with the new, uh, Season of Dying, oh, yeah, hang on, after that, no, Nightmare Hunts. Nightmare hunts, so you're gonna do three of these nightmare hunts per week and you get a powerful drop. Some of them are easy, some are not that hard, but um, you just gotta know which ones you like the most. Uh, I like Hunt Up Nightmare Hunt Rage, which is really fast to do. You can burst down gold pretty easily. It doesn't have a lot of immune uh, stuff, except for like Tanics and uh, Fogoth, it's just very tanky. Um, other than that, the other thing is the Vex Offensive activity on the moon, which is uh, Vex Invasions. Which can be happen in three patrol areas, which is Anchor of Light, Archer's Line, and Hellmouth. And it seems to see they seem to spawn right after a public event, maybe about three seconds or four seconds after a public event. Um, just gotta wait a little bit. The main thing you wanna worry about is that you wanna make sure there's people in the area. I know it's a bug right now, just the matchmaking sucks for it. But you just want to make sure, because it's pretty hard to solo, so if you got some people in the area, make sure you have those helpful people. Uh, the one thing that I know that it can, the, it's not just doing them. You have to activate the fourth boss or the overlord in the invasion. Now, I, what I've been told, and this is, I'm skept not skeptical with it, but I could have been doing it wrong, but I spawned it many times before. What you need to do is that when you're killing the boss, if you do some damage to the boss, the gate lord, um, he will spawn some hydras. It would be two hydras. You kill them both, and then you're supposed to kill the boss, and then, the, then three. It's basically three gate lords will spawn, and then you kill hydras while you kill the gate lord. And after you kill all the three bosses, a overlord will spawn the fourth one, and then when you kill the overlord, he drops a powerful drop, which you can only drop two per week per character. So you could do that's pretty good, and it drops pretty high, probably tier two drop, I think. And what happens though, I was playing my Warlock recently and I was using uh, Chaos Reach and I would kill both the Hydras and then I would just uh, melt the boss pretty fast. And I I know for a fact I kill all the Hydras and I kill the third one and uh, the boss, the Overlord doesn't spawn. I don't know why, I did it twice in a row and it just doesn't spawn. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, I kill all the Hydras. Sometimes if you take too long or if you get them to the third bar He'll spawn more hydras. So if you go too too fast, I think it breaks it. So you want to make sure that you kill every single hydra, even if he's at low health. I think he spawns two more hydras, anyways. So you gotta kill those ones as well. You can't just go okay, kill both of them, and you gotta kill. There's two more. You gotta kill after that. All right. Enough of that. That's the moon, and of course there's a vex offensive activity, which you gotta do the uh, storyline or quest line with Ikora when you first talk to her. You gotta do a quest you gotta kill 100 vex and three gate lords um and yet but you need to do the first story mission for shadow keep so make sure you do that um other than that nothing too hard she gives you a tier three powerful drop when you collect the vex opponent uh, components other than that and then this weekly right here by defeating vex in the vex offensive and challenging vex gives you more progress it takes this if you're not since there's six or uh, five other people in that activity, it is kind of a hard to kill Vex because everyone's trying to kill things. So your progress is pretty slow. In my opinion is this is not worth to do. In the, in the beginning, you can do it, but after it gets like 930, 940, it is not worth to do. I would recommend to stay away from it. It takes a lot of time to do. It takes about, if you do it correctly and you kill a lot of Vex, 
you can get like 30% in one run, but if you don't, it may take four runs and it takes like an hour or two to finish it. So it's not worth it at all, but you can still do it. It's not that bad. Of course, we don't raid, but if you do raid, then that makes it a lot faster. But this is for, you know, not raiding as we never did it. And we got to 950 in about two two weeks around there. Um, other than that, um, what else is there? Okay, so remember when I said the season pass is really important uh, with this. So once you do all the power grinding of one character, you want to transfer the weapons to the next character. So let's say you got like nine, nine, ten weapons, and you have like nine hundred armor because you didn't really, you just got to your character nine hundred. Or no, how about this? How about got to nine twenty power, right? And any weapons, and you got like nine oh five armor. All right. So, what's the next thing to do? Wall drops won't will help you a little bit, but if you want quick power increase season pass this is where it comes useful you don't have to do it you can also do uh vendors as well um but this is just like it's just here for you because if, if you have 930 weapons you have 905 armor or whatever or 925 weapons your average would be about 915 918 gear power so when you pick up armor from here it'll be 918 and you get like a plus 10 increase in armor and then once you pick up one armor piece obviously the best the one you the thing you want to do is that since you won't have even numbers as in like for armor so if you have like 905 903 908 907 armor pieces you don't want you want to pick up the lowest one first as it'll increase your average a lot higher because it's the lowest and you go high blah, blah blah you should know this math if you don't know math then it's gonna be hard for you to power grind um pretty much so yeah, that's what you want to do go to season pass if you want because it's more it's rng with the crucible and uh, vanguard vendors because you don't get to choose what you want it's when you can choose exactly what armor and stuff you want to go quickly for because once you pick up let's say you had a 903 class item you pick up a, you pick up a 918 class item that is gonna that is a huge boost right there you'll get to 920 921 power just from that and then and then the next armor piece to pick up would be instead of 918 it'd be like 920 or 921 so like you're increasing your power by like 10 times and you could not do that last season. It's impossible. That would took a very long time to do. Other than that, uh, at the end, say you get like nine, you say your gear power is 945 at the end. Just do things that are not wasting time. Do the fastest things. So the fastest things you want to do is the bounties on the vendors. So do strikes. Those are fast with the bounties. Um, do gambit that's fast with bounties that's if that's four powerful drops do crucible with bounties to get rank ups as well more more powerful drops um prime engrams i never talk about them though not really they're rng um but they do help a lot it does seem sometimes not always sometimes it feels like they do give you the lowest powerful gear you need the most sometimes it's very finicky but it does seem like it does give you it not always so that's why or not they're they're good to get of course if you don't know how prior engrams work i'll do a little brief summary of prior engram prior engrams uh if you have a, a two mint charges you will get prime engrams you get one charge per day and you can hold i think seven or nine charges so if you don't play on that character for that day you'll get one and if you don't play for a while you'll get more um i pretty sure how so prime engrams work it's a boy based off of a point system once you reach and the point system is based off kills in the game so that once you reach 1800 2000 points it will drop a prime engram of course your prime engram can be an exotic drop as well or if you get exotic a world exotic world drop it is counts as a prime engram drop because it's, it's, it's a exact same thing as a prime engram drop since exotic drop is a powerful drop um but when I say points, it's because different health bar enemies count as different points. If you're killing red bar enemies, like plus one point to your program count. If you're playing killing boss enemies, like plus twenty or something like that. So pretty much, it's got to kill a lot of things. And if you play on three characters, you'll kill a lot of things, which doesn't really transfer. But they're account based, so or, I mean character based. So you can get a ton of programs and exotics pretty quickly. Um, other than that. What else is there? I don't even know. Um, get to 950. 
Um, slowly, you'll get there. It gets pretty annoying at the end. You get like 940, 49 drops. It takes a while. Um, but it slowly does it. You can do it on one character. It's no problem. But uh, like I said, it takes time. Um, but like, like I said earlier as well, um, it, there's no, there's no back, uh, what do you call it? There's no downfall or there's no reason not to play on second character or third character. Yes, if you're a casual player, you don't want to, you know, spend the time, but Shadowkeep made it so easy to play multiple characters as you can just don't have to play the campaign as the story and the campaign makes it so sluggish and you don't want to do it again and again and again which i did of course when i first played destiny and three characters and playing every single campaign three times now you don't have to do that and it's really easy to get into it so i honestly recommend at least trying it and if you don't and also it gives more diversity and if you play with a group of friends or just want to like look for a group you can switch to different classes that's more suited for that activity basically I don't know. That's just my thought about it. If I want to play like solo or something, Warlock's pretty good because I have Rift and you can heal yourself. If you want, I don't know, High Burst, Hunter has good burst as well, and Titan's just good. I don't know. Titan's Titan. They punch stuff. Other than that, um, just uh, work hard and uh, rank up and get bounties. But uh, all in all, this video is pretty crap. I don't even know what I decided to do. I just wanted to get some, uh, get, just get some little bit of help. People ask questions a lot. I'll try my best to answer some questions. If people watch this video, I don't even know. Uh, yep, that's my hunter. Has no hood because that's the ornament. I'm pretty sure people will probably question that as well. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we will. I'm trying to get. We'll see how the grind is for 960. If it's worth it or not. Um, but uh, I'll keep it, keep in touch. Um, a couple other things. I mean, people are probably curious about the season pass. So how we're at level, uh, reason season rank 82 already. It's just when you play on three characters, you get times three experience. So that's the answer. There's nothing else I can really say. I could explain what I do, but and fast ways to do it. But right now, there's people who have videos of that already, and people who probably talk about like 50 power already and the grind for it. Not a lot of people talk about solo or one character there's there's no point flying on one character you gotta play multiple characters pretty much um other than that i think that's pretty much the video it seems pretty boring to watch i bet but if i have use if it was useful information then that's pretty good but i don't believe any of it is pretty useful i don't know what i'm saying anymore i'm tired and i got things other things to do maybe i don't know i need to grind it's not really i'm done grinding for this week it's just week two of Shadow Keep. Next week it's Iron Banner. And that's our pinnacle gear time. Let's see how bad it's going to go. I don't know. Yep, that is the uh, video.